Hello folks, so in this video I'm going to continue working on Space Invaders in Pygame. I'm going to run the game from last time to show how far I'd gotten. So you can see I've got the game window and a title on the top and then I've got this background loaded in as well. So the next thing that I want to focus on in this video is creating the spaceship. And for that I'm going to use Pygame's sprite classes. So I'll add a comment first of all, create spaceship class, and then I'll define it class spaceship and because I'm using Pygame's sprite class I'm going to create a child of that class. So the first thing as always is to define your init function and I'm only going to supply two arguments for now the x and the y coordinates. So within this init because this spaceship class is going to be a child of the Pygame sprite class it means that I need to call pygame.sprite.sprite .sprite, and I need to call its init function. So this may be a little bit confusing. Uh, this comes directly from Pygame's own documentation and essentially what's happening here is that I'm inheriting the functionality of the Pygame sprite class within my spaceship class. So this will make a bit more sense as I add in uh, more of the code. So when creating these classes, or rather these sprite classes, there are two uh, key variables that you need to assign to the class. So the first one is image, because the sprite needs to have something to put onto the screen. So in this case, I have uh, an image that I'm going to load in. So I will use pygame.image.load, and my images are stored in the img folder, and then it's called spaceship.png. And I will link these in the description if you want to use the same ones but otherwise you can just find your own sprites if you want to change them out. So the next one is you have to take that image and convert it into a rectangle. So that's easy enough, self.image.get underscore rect. So that'll create a rectangle object from that image. And I want to be able to position it based on these X and Y coordinates that I'm supplying. And I'm going to say self rect center so the midpoint of the rectangle is going to be x and y, which are the coordinates that I'll supply when I create the spaceship instance. So with the spaceship class created, I can now create an instance of it. So I'll come down here, but before I create an instance of it, uh, the sprite classes within Pygame go hand in hand with groups. So first I'm going to create a group for my spaceships. I mean, there's only going to be one, but I still create a group because it gives me some extra functionality. So I will say create sprite groups and I will add all of them in here as I go. But for now, I only have my spaceship group. So spaceship underscore group equals pygame.sprite.group. And with that created, I can now create the instance of the spaceship. So I'll say create player and spaceship equals I'll call the class of spaceship and now I'll need to supply the X and the Y coordinates where I want that to be created. So I want it to be in the middle of the screen. So I will say screen width divided by two, but I don't want that to give me a decimal point. So I will convert that to an integer. So int screen width divided by two is going to be my X coordinate. And for the Y coordinate, I can just take screen height and then take off say 100 pixels so that it's not right at the bottom and doesn't go off the screen. So with the spaceship instance created, I can now add it into my group. And this works very similarly to lists. So if this was a list, I would say spaceship group dot append and it would add it onto it. But because this is a sprite group, instead I just say dot add. And I put in this instance that I have just created above. So in theory, if I had a number of these spaceships, and this is what's going to happen with the rest of the classes that I'll be creating later on. I just keep adding them into a group and it just keeps track of all of the objects within it. So very much like a list. So now I want to display this on the screen. I'll come down here where I've got my updates and just add it all in here. So I'll add a comment, update uh, sprite groups, which again for now is just the one group. And now I can say spaceship group dot draw and I supply 
the screen. Uh, actually, I should call this draw so as not to get confused with the update function. So what's important to note here, I've called the draw function. However, if I come back into this class, I've never actually defined a draw function. So this is one of the benefits or one of the useful features of creating these classes as child classes of Pygames sprite class, because these already contain a built-in draw and update function. So when I create them and add them to a group, they already have a draw function, and this is automatically going to add that onto the screen. So if I just run this code now, just to check if everything's working okay, and you can see that the spaceship is now in the middle of the screen and a little bit off the bottom. So the next thing to do, at the moment it's just shown there, but it's not being moved around. So now I can update it. Uh, so I will come into this class and I will define an update function. So like I said, because I have made this as a child of this sprite class, it's already got an update function. But at the moment that's not going to contain the functionality that I would like it to have. So I'm going to override that and add my own code. And this is going to be quite straightforward to start with. First, I want to uh, define a movement speed. So I'll set movement speed, and I will set this variable to eight. And now I'm just going to be looking for key presses. So get key press. And this is going to be the same as the event handling. So I will say key equals pygame.key.get underscore pressed. So this will just look for any key that's been pressed and it will tell me, well, it, it will contain all of the keys that have been pressed and I'm just going to look for particular ones out of it. So if key and square brackets pygame.k underscore left, which means the left key has been pressed, then I want to be able to move the, uh, the spaceship over to the left hand side. So I can add that in here. My spaceship, if you remember, is saved as a rectangle object. So if I just move this rectangle around, that's going to move the spaceship. So self.rectx, just going to decrease that by the speed. So holding left is going to de decrease the x coordinate by 8 each time. Now I can copy this down and do the same thing for the right key. So just replace this with right, and instead of minus, this is now going to be plus. So with this defined now, I can come into my code here. So at the moment, I've got a section for draw, and I will just say update spaceship. And it's going to be spaceship dot update. So let's run this just to check. And there we go. I'm able to move the spaceship left and right with the arrow keys. But of course, the obvious problem is that I'm going off the screen. So that's easy enough to fix. If I go back into this, all I need to do is add some limits to my left and right uh, coordinates. So I only want the spaceship to be able to move left as long as it hasn't gone off the screen to the left. So I'll just add an extra check here. So I'll type and self.rect left, meaning that the left hand side of the spaceship rectangle is greater than zero. So only if it's to the right hand side of the, uh, well, only if it's still on the screen, only in that case do I want it to move to the left. And then I can do the same for the right hand side by saying self.rect right, and only if that's less than the screen width do I want to be able to move it to the right. So let's run that again, and now I've got these limits on how far I can go off the screen. So the last thing that I want to do is to add a health bar to the spaceship. So I'm going to do that within the same function, but before I do, I need to define a couple of colors up here. So I'll come into the section and I'll say define colors. And the one I'm going to need is red. So that's 255010. And I need green. So that's 0, 255, and 0. Uh, with these defined, I just need to add a couple of extra variables to the spaceship class. So that is self.health start, so the health that we begin at, and self.health remaining. Remaining. 
and both of these I'm going to set to health. So this is another argument that I'm going to add to this function and when I initialize the spaceship I will set them both to the same thing. So it just means that the health, uh, the spaceship is going to have full health to start with. So below where I have created this instance, I need to add this extra variable, uh, this extra argument, and it's going to be three. So I can get hit three times by the alien bullets before this blows up. So now that I've got these defined, I can add the health bar. I'll add here, draw health bar. And this is going to be quite straightforward. It's just going to be two rectangles laid over each other. So the first one is going to be the red rectangle. So I'll say pygame.draw.rect using pygame's built-in rectangle function. And the first argument is the window that I put this onto always, and that's the screen. Then the color that I want this to be, which is red. And then I need to give it an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So the x-coordinate will be the rectangle of, uh, of the spaceship. So I want this to be the same size, more or less, as the spaceship. So self-rect x. And the y coordinate, I want it to be a little bit underneath the spaceship. So self.rec.button plus 10 pixels. So that is going to define my starting x and y coordinates. Now I need to define the width. So self.rectwidth, meaning that uh, it's going to be the exact same width as a spaceship. And lastly, a height, which I will set to 15 pixels. So this should draw a red rectangle. Let me just run this to check, and there we go. So now it looks like the spaceship has completely uh, lost all its health. So to get around that, I will just say, if self.health remaining is greater than, oh, typo there, remaining is greater than zero, so the spaceship is still alive, then I can just copy this down and basically just draw a green rectangle over that red one. So I just change this to green. And the coordinates for X and Y stay the same to start with, but the width has to change. And the reason for this is essentially what I'm going to have is the red rectangle is going to be always underneath the green. So when I have full health, the green one is going to cover it completely. But then as the health drops off, the green one will get shorter, so it's going to look like the ship is taking damage. So I need the X, or rather, I need the width to adjust based on the health remaining as a ratio of the overall health. So I'll type this out and explain it as I go, because it could be a little bit confusing. So I'll say, first of all, all of this needs to be taken as an integer. Because of the multiplication and division, I don't want to end up with any decimal points. So the self rectangle width, which is the width of the spaceship, multiplied by, and this is where I just want a ratio of the remaining health divided by the maximum health that I started with. So self dot health underscore remaining divided by self dot health start. And I just need to add an extra bracket in here. So if I run through this now, at the beginning I have health remaining and health start are equal to the same value of 3. So 3 divided by 3 is going to give me 1, and that means the self rectangle width will be the same as, or this will be the width of the spaceship. So the green rectangle is going to take up the entirety of the health bar. But as I take damage, my health remaining will go down, but the health start will stay the same. So after one set of damage, this will go down to 2, and this will stay at 3. Therefore, the width of this rectangle is going to be two thirds, and then one third, and then finally zero. So let's run this now just to check. And I have made a typo somewhere. Self.health. Yeah, of course, I've put a full stop instead of an underscore. Okay, try that again. And that's better now. So I've got underneath this green bar, there is a red bar. So the green bar just covers it, and as I take damage, the green bar is going to get shorter and shorter, and it's going to reveal the red bar underneath. So that's everything for this video. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to look to add a bit more functionality and build on this game further. Uh, if you found this useful, then please do leave a like, and if you want to stay up to date with future tutorials, then feel free to subscribe. 
thanks for watching.